Hi, welcome to History Respawn. I'm your host, Bob Whitaker. To celebrate the 50th anniversary of the first moon landing, we're looking at Kerbal Space Program, specifically the game's Making History DLC. Kerbal Space Program is a space flight simulation game that has the player direct the space program for a species of adorable humanoid aliens called Kerbals. While the base game is largely an open sandbox, the Making History DLC allows players to play historic spaceflight missions from human history, including most of the Apollo missions. My guest on today's show is Dr. Roger Lanius. Dr. Lanius is the former Associate Director of Collection and Curatorial Affairs at the Smithsonian's Air and Space Museum, and he is the former Chief Historian of NASA. He has written or edited more than 30 books on aerospace history, including Hubble's Legacy, Exploring the Solar System, and the Smithsonian Atlas of Space Exploration. Dr. Lanius has also appeared on many radio and television documentaries about space exploration, including the latest episodes of American Experience about the U.S. space program, airing this month on PBS. Roger, welcome to the show. Thank you. My pleasure. Most of the missions and mods associated with Kerbal Space Program focus on depicting the missions of the Apollo program. Could you give our audience a brief background on the history and purpose of the Apollo program? Well, sure. Um, Apollo was established uh, in 1961 with the presidential announcement by John F. Kennedy, uh, actually May 25th of 1961, in which he uh, declared that the United States would go to the moon by the end of the decade and, uh, and return astronauts safely to the Earth thereafter. The uh, purpose of this was to demonstrate American scientific and technological prowess before the world. And at the time, the U.S. was locked in a really a struggle to the death with the Soviet Union over competing economic, political, and military systems. And the future, uh, mm. pro and probably the delimiter of what is uh, going to be successful in, in this struggle is science and technology. And so this was a way to demonstrate that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I know from teaching U.S. history, there's a lot of emphasis on the decision to go to the moon being kind of a, a leadership decision. In other words, being kind of directed from the top of the U.S. government, particularly uh, President Kennedy. Uh, but was there any kind of groundswell, say, within NASA itself uh, to go to the moon? Was this part of their uh, own objective as an organization? Oh, no question. NASA had wanted to do this from the time it was created. In 1959, uh, the NASA leadership convened a review panel to come up with uh, sort of long-term goals for space exploration. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and the steps are ones that if anybody's following spaceflight at all, you know them. The first one is, you know, put a spacecraft with a human aboard in orbit just to prove you can do it. Well, that became Project Mercury. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the second step was to build a winged reusable spacecraft that made it fairly uh, straightforward and routine to go to and from Earth orbit. The third step would be to build a space station, which that space shuttle, if you will, would go to. And from mm -hmm. that space station, they would launch missions to the moon and ultimately to Mars. So sort of a five-step process, and all of those ingredients have been things that NASA has been engaged in. The one change was uh, Kennedy's decision in 61 to say, uh, we're not going to build a space shuttle and a space station first. We're going straight to the moon. But no, <laughs> but no sooner is pa Apollo completed, then NASA goes right back to that playbook, and the next, the next item on the agenda is a space shuttle, and immediately after that, a space station. And I would imagine that decision in 61 by Kennedy had something to do with Yuri Gregorian, perhaps you know, having the Soviets in space first, oh, kind absolutely. of applying pressure on the U.S. Yeah, no question about that. So uh, there, are, there are two events that take place within a week of each other in, the, in April of 19. 61 that really pushed Kennedy in this direction. The first is the uh, 12th of April launch of uh, Yuri Gagarin on a one orbit mission around uh, the Earth and the reaction to that. Um, the, the Soviets, they may not have realized it when they flew him, but he was an enormously 
popular figure. Uh, he was handsome. He was charismatic, all of those things. And so he became the face of, of space flight in this modern era in this competition with the Americans. And uh, the Soviets really ate this up, and so did the rest of the world. Within a week of that, Kennedy takes a black eye with the failed Bay of Pigs invasion backed by the Americans and the CIA uh, to overthrow Castro. And at that point, those two events, Kennedy said, I have to change the subject. And, 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 and he directed his vice president, Lyndon Johnson, to find me something that uh, we can do in space that will be spectacular and that, uh, that we can win at. And the result of that was moon landings. So we're in the midst of celebrating the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11, which landed the first men on the moon. And this mission is often considered to be one of America's great achievements. But I'm curious to know if everyone at the time was as supportive of the Apollo program. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the misnomers that we have when we think back on this. And it's true for even people who were sort of in opposition at the time, they sort of look back at it with rose-colored glasses, and we sort of think, oh, yeah, this was wonderful. Everybody loved it. No, they didn't. Um, the, the reality is that public support for the moon landings uh, was less than 50% throughout the 1960s. The only time it, it, it creeped above 50% in public opinion polls uh, was at the time of the landings themselves in 1969. Mm -hmm. When everybody got aboard, said, "Oh yeah, yeah, no, this is cool," <laughs> and, and always it was, and, and opposition was always couched in, "Can't we spend our money on something more useful uh, than than this particular thing?" And 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 politicians on the political left and the political right uh, both criticized it on basis. Uh, the political left, uh, you know, can't we use it for social programs? How about you know feeding the poor? Uh, people on the right said, you know, maybe it needs to go into military, or maybe we need to give it back as a tax cut. <laughs> uh, you know, so so you find all of this um, uh, present at the time, and uh, and and so this this particular approach uh, and this concern about it uh, was present all through the through the moon landing period itself, the space race, if you will. Uh, Amitai Etzioni, a scholar at uh, George Washington University, even wrote a book with the, uh, and he was on the political left, uh, even wrote a book called The Moon Doggle, uh, in, in which he talked about the mm -hmm. waste of money that this was. Mm. So much of the excitement involved in playing Kerbal Space Program has to do with moments when things go wrong. Uh, either the player is forced to deal with an unexpected event that throws a mission off course, or there's some sort of player error that leads to disaster. Were there any such moments of unexpected events or human error involved with Apollo 11? The most famous, of course, is the, uh, it's the problem they had at the time of the landing. Uh, when uh, uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin are coming in uh, to the uh, field where they were supposed to land, and they look down and see a bunch of boulders. And at that point, uh, and, and the landings were more or less automated. Um, uh, Neil took control of the of the spacecraft at that point, uh, and uh, and pushed it forward to get past that what they called a debris field. It was really a bunch of boulders in, a, uh, in an open plain and, uh, until he could find a place to set down. And uh, when they sort of did that, uh, the two of them are working their, uh, their controls as, a, as, you know, as they were trained to do, but uh, they had expended more fuel than was anticipated. And uh, by the time they set down, uh, they only had a few seconds of fuel remaining. They could have aborted uh, prior to the landing had it become really serious, but uh, but as it was, they, they made it down onto the surface, but there wasn't much to spare. So that was certainly unanticipated. 
but they handled it as you would expect uh, seasoned pilots and astronauts to do. Mm -hmm. So for the players in Kerbal Space Program, the goal of most historical missions is to simply prove to yourself and others that you can do it. Uh, there's no wider game narrative involving a Cold War or a space race with another nation. And this is kind of a counterfactual question, but do you think, absent the pressure and competition inherent in the Cold War, that the United States would have even tried to land on the moon? Well, I think probably they would have at some point. The question, and, and pretty clearly they would not have done it on the accelerated schedule that uh, Apollo was carried out uh, because of that Cold War. And it's quite possible also this might have been an international effort, not unlike the uh, the current space station program, with uh, allies engaged uh, in this, and maybe even the Soviet Union, because there is a there is a way to lessen tensions in that Cold War environment by uh, by interacting with those uh, uh, with those nations that are potential rivals and basically turning them more on your side than not. All right. Well, that does it for my questions. Thank you so much for your time, Roger. Hey, my pleasure. Take care. If you enjoy our work here at History Respawn and want to support the show, please visit our Patreon page at www.patreon.com forward slash History Respawn. Until next time, goodbye.